Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Wednesday, and all of our guests today, including Farhan Lalji, standing by, brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. No shortage of people in the Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox pointing out to us that Jason Garrison also had a big shot uh, from the he point. He did. Uh, yeah. White Rock. White Rock native Jason Garrison. Yes, and he uh, in between Salo and, and what we see now from, from Heronic. Your submissions are, are welcome. Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox as we're joined now by Farhan Lalji from TSN. Farhan, uh, thanks for doing this, sir. Got the bucket hat on back oh. from Houston. Did you wear that in Houston by any chance? No, 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 no hats. I, you know, I kept all the UW paraphernalia hidden during the broadcast, even though I was kind of wearing it underneath. Didn't go so well for me, but uh, yeah, the bucket hat did not come out in Houston. How was it, uh, by the way, uh, for people who <laughs> who uh, might have had their heads stuck in the sand the last few days? Michigan over Washington, thirty-four thirteen. What was that experience? Ooh. What was that experience like for for you, a reporter slash Huskies fan? Yeah, you know, it was great, right? Uh, it was disappointing in the outcome. You know, I don't think that Washington put its best performance out there. I thought, as you know, Michigan had a lot to do with that. There's no doubt, but I also felt that there were some plays there to be made and, and Michael Penix who's been amazing for two seasons picked a bad day to have a bad day uh, but as far as the whole experience it was great for the Huskies to be a part of that you know every year I cover it and when you go down there you know the ESP, ESPN and, and the host committee and everybody around they spend so much time promoting these brands and, and star building right I mean you think about what TSN does for the World Junior Hockey Championships well times 10 on that to what happens in the NCAA uh, on ESPN you know when you get to the championship game so to have Washington's logo and, and the people that were down there, you know, that, that uh, have been associated with that program, you know, people that I've gotten to know over the years or people that I've, you know, I grew up admiring when I was, a, when I was really young. Uh, it was just cool to see so many of them and hear the names again. And uh, it was just, a, you know, a unique experience and hopefully one that doesn't stay unique and that they can continue to represent themselves deep into the playoffs as this thing gets expanded. Do you expect Jim Harbaugh to give the NFL another shot? Yeah, I do. I mean, there's going to be more suspensions for Harbaugh, right? I mean, say what you want. If you're a Michigan fan, you don't think they cheated, whatever. The truth is, this is not done. And the reason there were early settlements made, like the first three-game suspension, Michigan did it on their own because they couldn't get the NCAA to approve that suspension because the NCAA wants the right to have more. And same thing on the sign-stealing scandal. So I expect there to be more suspensions and sanctions. And if you're Harbaugh and you finally won the thing, yeah. You know, if ever there was a time to get out. And on top of that, this is a very senior-laden team at Michigan, right? I mean, both these teams were quite experienced. Michigan had 16 seniors. J.J. Uh, McCarthy, one of their juniors, may also choose to move on. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be tough for him to come back and replicate that level of success if ever there was a time to get out. This is probably it. And I know that he was quite interested in the Chargers job before, uh, a year ago, and it didn't come available then. It's now available. So I, I certainly think there's a high probability that he winds up coaching Justin Herbert in the NFL next season. Farhan, let's talk about the Seahawks. Uh, no playoffs. Two of the last three years, even their playoff uh, game, they got killed in San Francisco. Uh, Pete Carroll says he wants back. Are we looking at major changes there, or are we looking at, uh, I mean, what, what, what's got to happen there to get them back to where they need to be? Yeah. yeah, you know, Pete Carroll wants to come back. Bill Belichick wants to come back. You know, there was a time when Jim Harbaugh almost lost his job and was able to come back and had to make some serious changes to his staff. And in the case of Pete Carroll, I think he not only needs to make changes to his staff, I think he needs to make changes to his philosophy, uh, both in terms of how he wants to move the football offensively and defensively how he wants to build that team, right? As good as Devin Witherspoon has been for the Seahawks, they should have picked Jalen Carter. Why? Because their run defense was awful, and that was the area they needed to improve. And you, you, he's shown he's not going to have success playing the style of offensive football he wants to play, right? It's... It's just not the way the NFL functions at its highest level. He needs to go get himself a quarterback, and he needs to open up that offense a little bit because he does have some of the receiving pieces to do that. So, I have every reason to believe Jim Harbaugh is going to be back as the head, or sorry, Jim Harbaugh that Pete Carroll is going to be back as the head coach in Seattle next season. Um, he wants to be Jody Allen's not going to move on from him. Like that change doesn't happen until she sells the team, unless he wants to voluntarily retire. So he'll be back, but. If the Seahawks are going to get better, he's got to make some meaningful changes, not just to the coaching staff and roster, but to his own philosophy on how to get things done in the NFL. 
All right, Nathan, your uh, Rourke is on the show in uh, in about 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the future hold? NFL, CFL? I mean, to, to, to be down there the whole year and not play a down farhand, it's got to be frustrating. It's got to be disappointing. Um, does he stick around and wait for a chance and wait for his break? Well, I mean, you're going to talk to him at 11, but I certainly believe he'll be in the NFL next year. Uh, I think he was disappointed. Sure, he was disappointed just the way things went down, but I also think he went down there knowing this was going to be a long-term process. Now, having to live through it and the frustrations of – sitting on the bench for an entire season. I think that's easier said than done, and you'll probably get that indication when you talk to him because he's such a competitor. Um, I, I think in the last game uh, against New England, I, I think there was kind of a – I think he thought he was going to get to play, right? Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And certainly the way the thing that game was going with Bailey Zappi, as close as it was, Nathan Rourke should have played, right? Like Bill Belichick should have played him. So it's disappointing for all of us that we didn't get to watch him play even one snap during the regular season. But I think he showed to himself in the preseason that if he that if he gives this a shot, he's capable of doing this. And I hope he does, right? So he made a decision to go to Jacksonville based on one set of circumstances. Uh, you know, in terms of a stable roster, a quarterback developer and head coach, um, you know, the, the, the P5 guarantee and all of those things. Maybe he makes the decision next year on a different set of circumstances. One where he might have a little bit of a window to get onto the field sooner, even if the team doesn't necessarily offer him some guarantees. So we'll see which way he goes. We'll see what the Patriots do because he's their property. All they have got to do is give him a qualifying offer and he can come back. But you have to believe the Patriots, regardless of whether Bill Belichick stays or goes, are going to draft a quarterback high. And if they draft a quarterback high, that means they're probably going to go out and try to find a veteran backup to mentor that first round draft pick quarterback. So where would Nathan fit into that? I don't know. And if they do that, hopefully they, they do allow him to, to move on and look at other options. So if that happens, if he starts bouncing around, what, what will that uh, tell you, Farhan? Because I'm trying to – I remember Dave Dickinson doing that. Yeah. I'm trying to think of somebody who did that and ended up having – former CFLer and ended up having success in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, Dave stayed in San Diego uh, at the time and, you know, waited and it didn't work. And, you know, Ricky Ray had a short stint as well. And so, look, Nathan's got to make that decision, right? Uh, I don't think this is going to go for four or five years. Right? If he goes through a second season like he did this season, then I think the competitive desire of just wanting to play will, will draw him back here. But I think there's going to be another full season for him. And, yeah. look, this is timing, guys. Right? Like, we can look back on it in hindsight and say he made a mistake, and that's fine. But this is timing. And when you look at... You know, Tommy DeVito and Clayton Toon and yeah. Josh Dobbs and so many of these quarterbacks that just happen to be at the right place at the right time, but it fell into their lap. Unfortunately for Nathan, it didn't. I mean, just imagine that, you know, the, the week that Nathan left, Trevor Lawrence couldn't even dress. No kidding. Right? So he would have been second stringer that week uh, for Jacksonville behind C.J. Beathard. And C.J. Beathard was dealing with an injury. And just what if mm-hmm. Beathard would have got hurt in that game, right? Like, you just don't know where it's going to take you. So you, you take calculated risks and you make decisions based on certain factors. I know there's a lot of fans out there that are angry at Nathan Rourke. That he went for the money. He didn't go for the money. He went to pursue his dream. And, you know, we're all parents, and we all want our kids to do that. And I, I for one, applaud Nathan for chasing his dream. I hope he continues to chase it. He doesn't owe anything to anybody in the CFL to come and get us excited by watching his play. He owes it to himself to do everything he can, to, to have no regrets. So good on him, and I hope it works out for him because I do believe physically he can play. It's just got to be timing, and some of that timing's out of his hands. And, and quickly, Farhan, what impresses you the most about the Canucks right now? Wow, just a number of different ways they're, they're getting it done. You know, the lotto line has been, has been fun to watch, uh, reunited for the last three games here, but they're getting secondary scoring. They're getting scoring from the back end. The back end yesterday was able to just – make a load management decision just to be proactive and hmm. get no Juleson into the lineup and give Ian Cole a rest. So, you know, so the way it's been going for them, there's just a lot of areas. It's not one element of the team that is carrying them, you know, early in the year, power play, midway through the season, third line, you know, now the lotto line and, you know, they're getting, like I said, it's just, there's a lot going right for this team. And, and I just go back to Jim Rutherford's words, a lot needed to go right. And it did. And if they can stay healthy the rest of the way here, there's no, you know, this team will be contending for first place in the division and conference as long as they stay healthy over the final 41. Good to have you back in this part of the world. Farhan, thanks for this. We'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. I'll be in Kansas City this weekend, so I won't be here long. Okay. All right. Well, we look forward Traveling to man. hearing your report next week. The, yeah. The bucket yeah. hat will Take not it be with you. Take it with you. It, it'll no, be there will be earmuffs, earmuffs and a toque.
Yeah. Minus what is, 22. Minus, I, I was, yeah, minus, minus 22. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In Celsius, that's really cold. <laughs> Thanks for yeah, this, Farhan. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, See you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it.